Well, the whole time I was creating this painting, I was thinking, what would Bob Ross do if he was painting this? And I thought about our, our similarities, our likenesses, and things that we do different. And so I'm going to explain to you a couple of things that I do different that I think has really made a difference in my painting life. So let's go to the easel and see what's going on. Well, let me tell you first that this landscape has been inspired by some of God's most beautiful creations. So always we put the liquid white on first and do the finger test. You should just see your fingerprints. And then even though this is a wet canvas, it doesn't make any difference. I can still use my black fine charcoal to do a rough sketch. And um, this is tip number one. I have found that it really kind of helps if I just put a little sketch on the paper or the canvas, whatever. <laughs> and um, it just, it, what it does is it kind of implants where you're going with this painting in your mind. It kind of just gives you a little bit of structure as to where it's going to end up. And the, the neat thing about the sketching first is that you can always change things before you actually start painting if that's what you want to do. But as you can see, this, this is going to be a nice little painting with a lot of good distance in it. And I'm going to start out by doing the sky. Um, Bob Ross always did the sky first. He, he, I guess he figured that's the furthest point away. And so he always started with the sky and then he would just gradually start moving forward into the painting and just a layer by layer do each thing. Well, I kind of do some of the similar things like that, but not everything the same. I did on this one, I painted the sky blue and then I'm going down into the water. Now this is thalo blue. If you don't have thalo blue, you can use Prussian blue. You could use um, cerulean blue. Any blue that you have that you like, you could use. So once the sky is down, I have added some Prussian blue into the corners. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to create uh, a darker color around the outer edge of the painting because that kind of draws your eye more into the center, which is where you want your eye to go. You always want that center part to be the attractive part of your painting. So now that the sky is in and the water, let's do a moon. Now I'm just taking my finger and titanium white and you might have to do this more than once and don't worry about using pure white because you're actually picking up some blue underneath to so that paint is not a pure white which is good. It's, um, it's not a good thing to always use pure white except for your highlights, your very lightest light. So now I want to create a distant mountain. And so I've taken some alizarin crimson and Prussian blue and I've just made a very light bluish lavender color. Uh, I want this way off so it's not going to be detailed and it's not going to be dark. Uh, wipe your brush frequently because you'll be picking up a lot of white. And um, I want to just start highlighting just a little bit. Notice that it is on the side of the moon because the moon would be hitting a little bit on, well, I shouldn't, yeah, that is the moon, that's right. It's not the sun, it's the moon, a day, a day moon. You've seen those day moons? <laughs> it's crazy, but every once in a while you'll see like a full moon in the daytime. I don't know how that happens, but it does. Anyway, just highlighting that a uh, little bit, that, that mountain on the left-hand side. So now I want to make a deeper color. So I'm using black, blue, alizarin, uh, a little brown, and um, just a very dark purplish color. Deeper than the color, that, the first color that I put on. And I can see I'm changing my mountain shape already right here because I decided two would be better than one. So I'm putting in a second one. <laughs> see, you're allowed to do that as an artist. You can change anything you want. So just filling that in 
And now I want to darken these back edges on the side that's away from the moon. You want to create some depth and some darkness in there, some a little bit deeper color. You know, I did something different in this video. I'm, I'm going to see if you guys can catch what it is. Um, how meant it, let me know in the comments below if you've, if you've seen anything different in this video. Um, a little bit later I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> it's just, it was totally an experiment, but I thought, well, this seems to be working pretty good. I just might go ahead with it and just do some more. So anyway, now I'm grabbing just a little yellow ochre with my white just to highlight this mountain here. So we have three mountains so far. Now I want a very dark color, so I'm adding green to this mix. Now that's a little too green, so I'm going to add black and some brown and some ochre. And I'll just, uh, just, I want just a, uh, just to fill in, just to block in this color. So you noticed I've blocked in these mountains so far. And now I'm blocking in the ground area. This is just a deep green color. And it is going to have a lot of distance. So you'll notice that I'm developing sort of a triangle feel. There'll be a triangle like on the left side and a triangle on the right side. And that, that kind of draws your eye back into the center of the painting. That's where the water goes way back into the mountain area. So just go ahead and fill this space in. Just keep adding paint as you need it. I want it darker in the front here because always as things come closer to you, they get darker. So this is a pretty deep color. Now let's go to the right hand side. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now notice I'm not being fussy with this at all. I'm just blocking it in. I'm just basically just getting and laying in color. And I want to develop these little points here, these little coves or these little fingers in the land area. And see already that doesn't that look interesting if you look at this really closely it looks like you can just see thousands of little trees and grasses and hills and just all kinds of stuff this is my wipeout tool i got this too dark back here i uh, too much green and i don't want it i don't want that much green because i want blue back there i want to be able to cover that up so with my one inch brush i'm just lightly Oh no, I'm sorry, my two inch brush. But if you have a one inch brush, you can use that. It's fine. <laughs> and, my, and my colors are all going to be listed down below in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the underneath the video. All my supplies, all my colors are always listed below. So if you're not sure what to use, just look down there. I give you um, all the supplies. So now I've just added burnt sienna to my ground area because I want to vary the shades and I want this to be more dirt looking towards the water's edge. So let's do that on the other side also. Now can you see how, how that distance is developing? That is really cool. I thought a long time about this painting and how I could do it and and uh, just make something different. I, you know, sometimes I get tired of just doing Bob Ross tutorials, you know, that type of thing. I want something that looks more, I don't know, just different and more original. And I think uh, when you start experimenting, you, you can make your own original paintings. And it's just so much fun when you just put parts and pieces together and come out with something grand. So now I'm placing a big old cliff back here on the right side, just a big old rocky looking cliff. And you notice as I'm filling this in, I'm varying my colors. I'm not using just a straight color. I've used a little black, a little blue, brown, and just mixing those colors. And each time I load my brush, I put just a little bit different color in there. 
that makes a lot more interesting painting. And, and you'll notice the way I'm crisscrossing and making uh, little strokes here and there. They actually become like little boulders, little rocks in, in this great big giant cliff. <laughs> So now I'm just adding a little white here, a touch of blue. Uh, I want just, I thought blue would really look pretty in this rock and so that's what I'm adding. Just it's going to be more like a, oh kind of like I guess a highlight color. I'm using my number five knife. And, and when I was doing the ground area, that was just my filbert. That was my number six filbert brush. Anyway, with my knife, just grabbing a little small rolls of paint, I'm just highlighting the very edges here. Little white, little blue. And of course your rock or your stones will will be a little bit different than mine, but that's great, you know. You're an individual. You paint things the way you see them. And now I want to add a little brown and white. And always with my colors, you know, if you don't have the color that I'm using, uh, if you don't have burnt sienna, use a different shade of brown. It doesn't make any difference. It will still turn out lovely. Not everybody has all the same colors that I do. So let's do this little mountain here. Just highlight that a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I like that. That turned out nice. Yes, I like it. Very pretty. And this needs a little bit of more highlight right along this edge here. and a few individual rocks. The more you use this knife, the more it will become your friend and you'll, you'll just be able to do amazing things with it. You just, you just need to practice it and play with it. Just even on a piece of cardboard, just lay out some color and just take that knife and just try to start making stones and mountains and rocks and things. So now with my blender brush, I'm just kind of fuzzing this up a little bit, just making, kind of muting these colors together. I don't want them real strong and definite. So this just kind of softens it a little bit. It also gives it, I think, more distance. And I want some white in the back of the water way back. I want a lighter color way back in that back edge there. So now with my dark color, I've just added all my darkest colors together. Now the brush I'm using is a number six wildlife brush. This is a fantastic brush. Mostly it's used for wildlife, but I find in my landscape paintings, this particular brush is fantastic. I love that brush. Um, just go, I'm just, what this is, is way distant trees. And so they're very tiny, short little strokes. And see, as I start coming forward, I'm starting to get a little taller. You'll have to keep reloading your brush frequently because it takes off a lot of paint. But they're getting taller and deeper. And now on the other side, let's go ahead and make some distant little trees back there too. They're not distinctive yet. You notice that they're just kind of um, just little dabs, just little upward strokes. Oh, I think this is just looking so good already. And I added some, you can vary your colors here. Uh, this time I added a little bit of a darker green, sort of green and black together. Um, that kind of puts a darker shade in there. And just blend that a little bit into the ground. You don't, you don't want to see a solid line just to blend that back in there. And now we're getting a little bit taller trees. 
You notice those strokes? I'm just kind of messing around up and down strokes. That's about it. Nothing, nothing definite, nothing strong. A few little short ones here and there. That just looks so good. I really am pleased with it so far. It's nice when you can say you like your own paintings. I'll tell you, most of my paintings I don't care for. Um, I pick them apart. I just find everything wrong with them. <laughs> but every once in a while I do one that I think, oh, I really like this one. Well, this happens to be one of those paintings. So now we're still coming forward closer to the foreground, closer to us. And so I'm darkening the color. Just up and down strokes, big trees in the, in the foreground here. Now with a little yellow ochre, let's put in some lighter highlights. Now this does more than one thing. This not only puts a little bit of the highlight in the trees, but it also lightens the color so it looks like it's more in the distance. You notice a difference there? Instead of being real dark now, it's just kind of a little bit lighter. That, that does create distance. And just put the little lighter strokes wherever you think they need it. And as always, um, I let my paintings dry and I will do more of these little highlights and stuff later and once it's dried because it, I just love doing that. I just, I don't know, it's a habit I picked up and I've just always done it. So now just at the little tops of these little fingers here, <clears throat> adding a little bit of yellow ochre, just to lighten that dirt color, just a slight bit on the, on the top. Just blend it into the background. One more little finger here. And you can shape your, your, your um, land any way you like. You don't necessarily have to follow exactly what I did. Now I'm just using a cad yellow just to lighten these tips just a tiny bit, just a, just, just a tiny bit on the edges. You might have to add a little white. That yellow is sometimes not very, oh, it doesn't show up very much. But if you add just a little bit of white to the color, it'll show up a whole lot better. And now with my fan brush, I just want to bring down some grasses and some, oh, kind of like shadow area. And with my blender, just very lightly go across that, kind of blend that and make reflections in the water. There, now see, see how the distance is in there? It just really is nice. So now we're going to start working on trees, evergreen trees. I want more distinctive trees on each side of the painting. So <clears throat> starting in the back, I'm just making a few little trees back there. Notice that I just put in my trunk first and then with just the little corner of my brush, if you watch closely, you can see I'm just doing a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Now let's make an even larger tree here because I'm getting closer. See the little dabs? and just work back and forth and side to side, filling in the trunk a little bit. And you can make these trees so realistic. You know, these evergreen trees, I think I have more people tell me that the evergreen tree is the one they cannot get. They just practice and practice, and it just seems like they never get it. But 
I'll tell you, if you just keep working at it, all of a sudden one day it'll just happen for you. You just have to learn to get the right pressure, the right amount of paint on the brush, and the right angle of the brush. Notice I'm tilting my brush a little bit here and there. See, now this tree I want to bring down even further on the ground because it is closer to us. And let's do a little bit of shadowing here. I suppose if I made that yellow, that sun, that uh, moon in the sky, it could be a sun, but <laughs> I like it as a moon. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> so now we want a big old tree. And then this great big evergreen tree back here. See, now watch how I use the brush. I just flipped it, going back and forth, side to side. Not pressing too hard until I get towards the very bottom. Once I get towards the bottom, then I can pretty much use the whole brush to fill in. See now, doesn't that turn out nice? I think those look very realistic. And you can always touch them up later to make them even better. Now working on the other side, we're going to do that same thing. We're just going to have a few little distant trees. And keep your brush loaded really well. Now as we come closer, a little bit taller. And come down more into the ground area. So tell me, have you figured out what I have done different in this video yet? <laughs> oh, it was totally an experiment, but I was experimenting with speeding the video up because, as you all know, I'm a very slow painter. And so I thought, well, if I speed it up, maybe it'll be more interesting for you folks. So I would like your feedback. Tell me what you think. Do you like it speeded up a little bit? Or do you like it in real time where you can see what I'm doing just very slowly. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Now with just a little bit of yellow ochre, I'm just barely touching these trees. I just want to give a little hint that there's some light hitting it. Not very much light. And I'm just using just the very tip of the brush, just the corner. I think that's the biggest problem that people have when they try and do these evergreen trees is that they they start using the whole brush and then you get like big smiley smiley faces or or what they call Z trees, you know, back and forth and and they just don't look very real takes a lot of practice to learn these trees. You know, I think it was, it was probably like three years before I got my best tree. I, I just, boy, for some reason, being a left-hander and having right-handed teachers, I just could not figure it out. But one, I just kept practicing, and once I did get it, I just love doing evergreen trees now. I can do them with any kind of a brush. I can use a flat, I think a flat brush makes beautiful evergreen trees and also the filbert brush makes beautiful evergreen trees. So now I want to add some darkness into this um, hillside here, into the, just give, give a little depth to these areas, to the ground area. See how that brown just really makes it richer, nicer, much nicer. Let's do that on the other side here just a little bit. And this is darker, filling in a little bit darker. 
Now I want to start some water lines. So I'm just taking my white and adding just the tiniest bit of blue to it. And with the little edge of my knife in the distance, I'm just putting little water lines way back there. Just faint little water lines. You don't want to use a pure white on this, just a light, very, very light blue. And as you come closer, you, you start using the bigger edge of the knife. Someone asked the other day, um, I was in a Facebook group, they says, well, does Bob use the flat edge of his knife, the underside or the top side? And Bob usually used the top side of his knife to do water lines. I like the underside best. Uh, for me, that works best. Now, maybe not everybody it will, but for me it does. <laughs> I like the underside. So just try it. Make water lines and see how you, um, what works best for you. I want to start showing a little bit of reflection in the water. Make sure, like I said, make sure it's just right straight under the moon. If it's off to the side, it'll look a little weird. It won't look like a real reflection at all. Still using light blue. Stand back and look from a distance. Make sure that it looks like it's right underneath. And then just lightly with your um, blender brush, just brush back and forth. Now with just a slight bit of brown and white, I'm just making a few little tree trunks. It's just little taps. I don't want a solid line. I just want little taps, just little indications. And I didn't notice I didn't hit every tree. I just hit some of them. Now that is just absolutely perfect. I'm very pleased with that. And we just want a few little sticks and stuff up in the air here. Those are probably trees that have, are dead and they're just, you know, they're just dead trees. <laughs> so now back to this little um, uh, wildlife brush. I want a few rocks in the water. And I haven't, I've got, I'm using just brown, but you can use, uh, you could use black and white or any color that you choose for your rocks. And as I go back into the distance, they get smaller and lighter. Use less pressure on your brush. Just, you just want a faint idea that there's something there. Now we need to make some reflections for the trees into the water. So I'm using my fan brush with that greenish color in it, the tree color, but I wipe the brush off so I don't have a lot of paint in there. The paint is just very, very thin. I'm just sort of just indicating something there. And the other side to do the same thing. And then with the blender brush, just kind of hypnotize that. Make it look like reflections in the water. Notice I'm, I'm pulling from the outside towards the center. And let's make a few rocks that are even closer. Now, the rocks, as they come closer, they would be a little bit darker and a little bit larger. Now this brings me to tip number four. 
This is something I absolutely love doing. And to my knowledge, Bob Ross never did this. But what I love to do is let this painting totally dry, at least a week, and then go back in and do all the special little highlight things to bring out the colors, to bring out the depth, uh, just everything. It just changes the painting totally. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let it dry now and then I'll be back with you to show you the finished painting. Now you may decide you just want to leave your painting just like this without any additions to it, but I did change mine. So I started in the background. I added birds. I changed the mountains a little bit by adding some shadows and some highlights and a little bit of the shape. And I also worked on the trees some, and mostly I worked on the foreground, adding a lot of color, rocks, and flowers, and just, um, oh, changing the water lines, and just anything that I thought it needed a little bit of fixing up. So anyway, well, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time.